Okay, so let's kick off. So welcome to uh, the very first Shot Saver Live, number one. And um, what we're looking to do with this is to offer a, um, a daily reminder, if you like, or an insight into how you can uh, improve your game. And that could be certain tips, it could be insights into how you review your game, or your round from the weekend, how you prepare for the next weekend, and how we maybe give you some insights into uh, how maybe uh, some of the tools and tips that tall pros would use or tall caddies would use can help you with your game. So one of the first questions I've had, which we're going to be looking at today, is actually from uh, one of the players I've just started working with, with David. Now, uh, David is, you know, much, much like uh, a lot of players, he's got himself into a position with his game where where pretty much most areas of the game he's really struggling with. So the scores have, have, have gone, you know, pretty much skyrocketed up. And so he's, he's got himself in a position where his confidence obviously has been dramatically knocked and he doesn't know where to turn with it. So we've looked at his game, we've prioritised certain areas of the game, but one of the key things that you need to do when, when your game struggles as a general rule is you want to be able to um, stop wasting as many shots as you feasibly began, can uh, to start with. And so what do I mean by that? Well, it actually links into uh, becoming, if you like, a, a bit of a tour caddy for yourself. So this, this is very, very close to, if you like, my heart, because one of my, um, uh, going back to when I competed on tour, one of my experiences was having one of these top amazing tour caddies come on my bag and transform my game literally overnight. And, you know, it's one of those key areas uh, to understand how, it, how, you know, appreciating what tour caddies do for players and how you can play that same role for yourself. So the tour caddy generally works in, in two areas, if you like, and one is in numbers and two is in shape. So, so what they'll tend to do is they'll give the tour player a very specific set of numbers and they'll discuss what shape they're actually going to hit. Now, why is that important to you as an amateur and how is that going to help you with your game? Well, if I go back to David, so David plays off 18 handicap and so, and like I just said, he's been really struggling, handicap's been going up and he's, he's currently shooting in the, in the hundreds, so he's well over his handicap. So when we're talking numbers and how he can now be a tour caddy and help him with his own game is actually to get him thinking differently. Because currently when he's on the course, he's feeling perhaps a little pressurised to, to go for certain shots, to, um, to not be as, as um, careful when, when you consider his, his game is not at the highest level at the moment. So the tour caddy, how do they work? Well, basically what they do is something like this. They'll say to the player, let's say we've got um, a 450 yard hole. Okay. So the, the caddy will stand on the tee with his player and what he'll do is he'll go something like this. He'll go, right, okay, um, David, if David is the, is the pro, he'll go, right, David, uh, we've 250 yards, we agreed that uh, we, wanna, we wanna hit 250 off the tee and we want to leave 200 yards into the uh, green. So we're looking at 250, 200 um, hole. Now, they then start working out, or the caddy starts working out if it's wind uh, against or wind with, which then will affect what club he uses uh, and what club they come up with. Now, again, what most amateurs will tend to do is they'll just have one club that they play no matter what and it generally is a fairly attacking club off that, off that first tee, which is, which is something, if you like, that David has been doing for himself as well. So he's been basically playing drive off every tee um, and obviously then getting himself into a bit of bother and losing sort of two or three balls and suddenly the, the numbers go up. So if this is the tour pro and, and the, the tour caddy discussing to the tour pro, they have this strategy that they've worked out before, beforehand. So how can we do that for David or for any amateur golfer? So basically there's going to be, let's give you three options now. Okay, so there's going to be one, two, three options. So the first thing we need to understand is the tour caddy or David being his own tour caddy needs to appreciate it's 450 yards 
His handicap is 18, so this is now a par 5. Now, sounds very simple that, but not necessarily easy to do when you're very tempted to get out there and, and, and give it a go and, and, and you know that you've parred this hole before and, and so on. But if we can actually start to take the pressure off David, so remember his, his game is he's, he's in a bit of a state with his game. So we're trying to build David up. We're not trying to knock him down every time he gets onto the golf course. So for me, we've got a, a few options. So David could go with the, the 250 and the 200 and go down the pro route. That is one option. Uh, the second option may look like something like maybe 210 and then he hits maybe 200, like a fairway would, uh, and then he goes in with 40 yards. And the numbers could be something along those, those lines, depending on obviously how far David hits the ball. And the third one could be along the lines of maybe 180 off the tee and 180, and then so that's 360, so we've now got 90 in. Now, whether those numbers are exact, but what we're really interested in here is, is giving David some options where he can actually start to, to actually take pressure off his game. Now, this one initially is the one I've tried to, to really uh, encourage David to use. Right? So I would like him to, to start using more effective clubs, like if it's well 180, he might be able to hit a rescue that lands maybe 150, 160 and rolls to 180 takes a lot of pressure off him initially, and then he can move forward and then perhaps hit another rescue or maybe a five iron, because he's now on the fairway, there'll be a bit more roll. Uh, and then he's gonna be left in with like a, just like a, a short wedge or a wedge into the hole. So what I've got to do is take someone who's highly emotional and, and is stuck on the golf course and actually a bit of a reset for him, which is basically what a tour caddy does for the tour pro. They are the logical thinker. The tour pro is that, that person who will get excited. We've all seen it with, for instance, many players. Uh, I think recently Rory McIlroy, in the event that he won, um, you may remember that he hit it into, uh, on the 72nd hole, he had it left into like a, a ditch um, or a stream and the caddy had to step in and really help him because all he wanted to do was quickly take the shot on. Now, luckily the, the caddy talked him out of it. Uh, they ended up taking a drop. They then hit the shot onto the green, two putted and won the event. Now, the odds are Rory may not have made that decision, so he needed to think as logically and clearly as he possibly could. And this is what I've got to try and do without being on the golf course with David, who is potentially not making those decisions initially. So this is where we're going. So the, remember, so the first thing that Tall Caddy does for a tour player is they talk in numbers, they don't talk in clubs. They work out, depending on what the conditions are, how much roll, where the wind is, and then what they do, they come up with uh, the club accordingly. Now, I see just a few other players, have, uh, a few other golfers have just come on uh, just to watch. So just a quick recap as to what you've just missed. We're just talking about how David, a, uh, one of the players who I have just started working with, uh, his game is in a, a bit of a state, he's really struggling with all areas, and he's out on the course and he's trying to actually um, attack the course a little bit too much. So I'm explaining what does a tour caddy do for the tour pro. So in a nutshell, the first thing the tour caddy does is they work in numbers. They don't just work straight away with clubs. So we've just come up with three options that potentially David could use when he's playing the next time he plays. And I'm asking him to go down this route, which is more like a 180 off the tee, a 180 layup, and a 90 into the middle of the green. Play it like the par five it is for him at the moment and try and walk off with his par five as opposed to being overly aggressive. So remember, his confidence is low. And when your confidence is low, you tighten up. Things will go worse. So the last thing you need to be doing is taking on more uh, risks and more shots that potentially you shouldn't. So the first thing the tour caddy does for the tour pro is they work in numbers. And that's what I want you to do. So literally get your numbers, get your strategy clear for the next round, if you like. And what I would encourage you to do is just go through the numbers that you think are right, especially on maybe the five or six holes that, that tend to, um, tend to uh, cause you all sorts of havoc, which we all have when we're playing. 
So if you can get those numbers clear, I think you'll be, you'll be interested to see how, what sort of influence that has on your scoring. So number one, use numbers. The second element that the tall caddies do when they're working with their tall players is they work with shapes. Now, speaking to David again, because this was David's question for today's live, and uh, one of the things he would said, which you understand, is you go, well, actually, Carl, I play off 18. Um, I can't shape it both ways. I, I, don't, I don't stand there. What I tend to do is I tend to aim straight and hit it straight and try and hit it straight. Now, that is the, potentially, as a, a tall caddy to tall player, that never, ever happens. You're always playing the shot one way or the other. Now, I understand what David's saying, but here's the interesting point. It's even more important for amateur golfers to make a decision on the type of shape they're going to play. So one, so the, one of the first things, again, the caddy's doing all the time, he gives the numbers, he's then standing there going, this is the shape, aim at the left edge of the green and hit a fade, or aim at the right edge of the green and hit a draw into this one. Very specific, and, build, and it builds confidence, which is what we're after. So in particular, again, with, with amateurs, it's very, very important to know that that is the shape. Get specific with it. It really, really does help. So when you're playing, for instance, over this next weekend, again, what I would encourage you to do is two things. You, we've got to train you to think like the tour caddy for yourself. What can you do to help your game? What would you do if you were caddying for someone else? How logical and clear-minded would you be in that situation? So pick the numbers and pick the shape. Get specific with it. It would really, really help. So... As David tries to build up his confidence, um, like I said, he's playing off 18, he's regularly shooting in the hundreds, 110s at the moment, so he's well over his handicap. I need to bring him back down, I need to reset him, I need to, to help him start to build that confidence. And you know, your game might not be in, in perhaps the, the, the state that David is at the moment, uh, uh, but what normally happens is it gradually filters down and it gradually, before you know it, it's getting worse and worse. And suddenly you're sitting there going, I don't know how this happened. So what I would recommend is be the tall caddy for yourself. Step out, have a little reset for one round. Start to play, again, far more percentage. Get your numbers right. Create a strategy before you play. Get clear on the shapes that you're going to hit. So I am going to hit to the green here. I'm playing left to this part of the green. I'm going to fade it or I'm playing over here, I'm going to draw it. If you try to aim straight all the time, you reduce your amount of room for error. And again, it's much more difficult to, to stand there and just hope that this thing is going to go straight. So, I hope that has been informative, I hope it's helpful, I would really encourage you to test it. Uh, when you do test it, for instance, the next time you play, whether that's during this week, or whether that's at the weekend, uh, please come back on the live or, or, or go onto uh, the Facebook page and, and drop a comment. Just let us know how it went and what sort of feedback you've got. So, I, look again, I hope you've enjoyed that. I hope you come and join me back for tomorrow. If you do have any comments or any questions you would like answered in the Shot Saver, Saver Daily Live, just ask and I will do my very best to come back with an answer the next day or during the week. So apart from that, um, happy golfing for the rest of, the rest of the week if you are out there golfing and uh, I look forward to seeing at the next live.